family. We really, really, really miss you. And we really, really miss the church. I want to wish you a happy Easter. Mukipula chapati kwa manyumba. Mungu wa bariki. And let us remember what Jesus did for us during a period like this 2,000 years ago. God bless you. Happy Easter. Hello, good people. I just want to wish you a happy Easter weekend as we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, may you enjoy with your family, stay at home, keep safe. If it is a must you go out, then wear a face mask. God bless you. Let's see each other when the quarantine is over. Hi everyone! From the Tembus, it's been long since we met in church together, but we really miss you guys. Hope you're staying safe. Let's continue fellowshipping together online. God bless you very much. Happy Easter! Uh, happy Easter, guys, uh, on behalf of Easter Assembly Band and Choir. Uh, stay safe. Uh, remember that Christ was uh, died and was born again for us. Now, Musikose, could you enjoy this Easter? Tonane after COVID. Happy Easter, guys. I've missed you so much, even I can't describe. I just want to wish you well during this time at home. Remember, if Jesus could have not risen, there will be no reason to keep on living. So make sure that Jesus is the reason why you are living, even during this time of bless. Hi, Hi Easter Assembly. Assembly family. We are the Gonjiri family, family, coming all the way to you from Waka. We love you guys, but right now we have to stay at home and that's why we are in the hoods. So the season is Easter. And Jesus is the reason for the season. At this time, he came and died for us on the cross. And we can celebrate because he rose again. On a day like Sunday, he rose again. And because of that, we can celebrate each and every day. And from the Ngonjiri family, we wish you a happy Easter. Happy Easter. You know, uh, I've chosen to be joyful and happy because I know that Christ has risen, that he overcame death. You know what, um, I know that this is a difficult time. We are either stuck in our houses or we have people who are there attending to people who are not feeling well as a result of COVID-19, but there are also other things that people are going through. But let's just know that even as the devil came to kill, steal and destroy, Jesus defeated him. He defeated him on the cross. And uh, as we remember this, we know that he came to give us life and life in abundance. In as much as we are not together in person, let's continue knowing that we are in fellowship together. And um, and this is why we remember that he won the victory on the cross. And guess what? He is reason. Amen. I miss church, Manze. But happy, happy, happy Easter to you all. This is Juma representing Sound Crew and the Youth Ministry. Happy Easter, Easter Sablis. What's up? Hi guys. Hi guys! It's the Mahanos family! Yeah! Wishing wish you a happy Easter! Happy Easter! Yes! We miss George! 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 God bless you abundantly. Bye. Jesus is the reason now for the season. Oh yes, oh yes, he is. Oh yes, he is. Yeah. Woo! This Easter, I just want you to remember God loves you, He cares for you, and He gave His one and only Son, Jesus, for the sake of you and me. Enjoy yourself even as you are at home. Take care. God loves you. Enjoy with your family. And remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Bye. Good morning, church. My name is Agnes Obutu. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In spite of the difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the being quarantined, I want to speak hope to all of us. We will come out of this stronger because we are conquerors in Christ Jesus. Happy Easter. Shalom. Guys, hope you're fine and doing great. I know these are hard times, but our God never leaves us, nor forsakes us. His word says that even if we pass through the fire, we shall not burn. If we pass through the waters, we shall not drown. 
even during this time of the storm. She is our peace. His mercies are new every day. Great is the faithfulness. I wish you a happy Easter. May God bless you. Keep safe. Bye. Hi, wonderful people. Beautiful you are. Marvelous you are. Have a great Easter. May the Lord visit you individually and touch you and strengthen you and empower you together with your families and your friends. Have a happy, happy Easter. Easter Sunday morning, we welcome you to the Easter Assembly online service. It's such a pleasure to host you today. Indeed, Christ is risen. I just want to ask you, is Christ risen in your heart this morning? Think about it. And so we welcome you from all the continents of the world. Come and worship with us. I want to welcome our praise and worship team, Easter Assembly. An anointed and adopt him to take us away. Karibuni.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We are just going to magnify his name and just declare that he is alive. Hallelujah. And we are just saying you, hi, Jehovah. From wherever you are, I just want to invite you to just sing together with us this morning. And just magnify the Lord. Don't care what's around you. If in your bedroom, stand up and just praise God. Lift your hands and give him praise. And just declare of his wonders. Because even if in this situation, he is faithful. Amen. He is faithful. Let's give him a clap of ring. Come on. Jehovah, you high me lately. 
mataifa tumsifu Yesu you hai you hai jehova you hai ni ele mataifa tumsifu sifu Yesu you hai you hai jehova hai jehova Jehova Hai Jehova Hai milele Mataifa Tumsifu Yesu you hai You hai Jehova You hai milele Mataifa Tum sifu Yesu you hai you hai Jehova you hai milele mataifa tum sifu Yesu you hai you hai Jehova you hai Jehova hai milele Jehova hai milele mataifa mataifa tumsifu Yesu hai alive is Jehova alive is Jehova forever is alive all nations praise him all nations praise him Jehova Jehova forever he's alive forever he's alive all nations praise him all nations praise him hallelujah Jesus Jesus is alive come on give him a dance if he's alive oh Kati ya mbingu Hakuna mungu kama wewe Kama wewe Kati ya mbingu Hakuna mungu kama wewe Kama wewe Kati kati ya mbingu Hakuna falme kama wewe Kama wewe Kati kati ya mbingu Hakuna mungu kama wewe kama wewe Bwana 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 Yesu 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 One night, one night, one night. 
Assembly Easter service. We are now going to go before the Lord to intercede and just to pray for one another wherever you are. I want to invite those who are watching us from their living rooms, from their bedrooms. Some mamas are in the kitchen preparing something for their people in the morning. I just ask you to just take a few minutes. We raise our hands together. If you can kneel, I invite you to kneel. But let's take these few minutes just to call upon the name of the Lord. The word of God in Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 says, Behold, I'm the Lord, God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? Name one. Is there anything our God cannot do for us? So in that mood of prayer, of knowing our God is able, let us pray. Our Father, in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you in this sanctuary this morning. We thank you because we can celebrate today even the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And so we resound with the voice of the angel saying, Glory, honor, power, and majesty is unto you, our God. Who is there like you, O God? The heavens, they declare your majesty. O Lord God Almighty, you who is seated in the heavenlies, reigning in power, we want to call upon you because you are almighty and all-powerful. Jehovah God, this morning, we do admit that we have sinned against you. Many other times, my Father, we go in our rebellious ways, saying and doing things, Lord, thinking through things that don't bring glory to your name. And so today, my Father and my God, as a nation, we come come to you, even as individuals, O oh Lord, we pray that you would have mercy upon us. Would you cleanse us with your precious blood? Jesus Christ, your word tells us that indeed if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray that you cleanse us with your blood so that as we bring our supplications to you, you would hear us and will be found acceptable. Thus we come before you, Lord, through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And we remind ourselves about what happened in the Exodus chapter 12, O Lord, where you asked the Israelites to just sprinkle the blood and the angel of death as he visited even the homes of the Egyptians. They would be exempt. Today, we cry for this blood to exempt us from the scorch that is going house to house, nation to nation, our Father. This, oh God, virus that starts with a sea, Jehovah God, it is nothing before you. Oh God, at the command of your voice, this can lift off. And Jehovah God, the God of power, we invite you today, Lord, relieve us, oh my Father, from the pain, from the death, from the shame, oh my Father, of this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. This morning, Lord, we bring every member of the East Assembly, wherever they are, here in Kenya and across the world, every clergy member, oh Lord, every leader, we want to bring ourselves to you, Lord, and we pray. Oh God, let your blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, may it protect us, may it hide us, may it cover us, oh Lord. We beseech you, our Father, to watch over us, provide for our daily bread. Some of us, my Father, have had to lose jobs, oh Lord. Some are on half pay. Some don't even know what their children will eat today, oh God. Jehovah God, because you hear we call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so today we call upon the God of Israel. Jehovah God, this afternoon, Lord God Almighty, we do pray in your name. Oh God, concerning the medics who are in the front line, my father, night and day, battling, oh God, with this disease. My father, some are very fearful for their health, even the well-being of their families. Today, Lord God Almighty, we send forth your word, oh Father, of protection upon every doctor, every nurse, every orderly, oh God, every diagonistic staff, my father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Watch over them, my father, as they 
care for the many sick, O Lord, as they minister to the needy, O Lord, at this time. Lord, give them the reassurance that you will watch over them and protect them. Watch over their families. Remove fear. Remove doubt from them because you can be trusted. We want to thank you, Lord God Almighty, because you hear us when we pray. We also want to remember the, O oh God, leadership of this nation from our dear president to his deputy to the county heads, even, oh God, every task force that has been set aside to assist us, my father, during this very difficult time, our God, we commend them to you. The Bible in the book of James tells us that if you lack wisdom, ask the Father who gives liberally without finding fault. Today, Lord, we speak the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding upon our leaders that you may teach them what to do at this time. Oh God, as they seek to strategize, let them craft the right formulas for us. My God, as they implement, let everything be successful. And when all is said and done, my Father, we shall come back to say thank you. Jehovah, Lord, we praise your name. We worship you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. My Father, what it is that we have not prayed. We pray that you, Holy Spirit, would you intercede in our stead. But we cry this morning that you would hear our prayer. That Christ, you will be risen in our lives. And all God's children, we say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Indeed, God is good. He hears when we call upon him. And so let's not cease to call upon the name of the Lord. My name is Grace. And I'm doing church with you this morning, and I thank God. It's now time to hear the word. What better day to hear the word of God than an Easter Sunday? Christ indeed is risen. And I take this opportunity in great humility to want to welcome our Reverend James Masharian. He is the pastor in charge of the children's ministry, East Assembly. Many of you have passed through his hands. And I want to pray for a big round of applause in this place. Yes, the worship team is right behind me. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Pasi, we normally call you Pasi Masha. So, Pasi Masha, karibu sana. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Grace, for that uh, warm welcome. Thank you so much, choir, for leading us in the presence of the Lord. We appreciate that. It's so good to worship God this morning. Who knew that we are going to be huddled together in our families on a day like this? Last year during Easter holiday, we were all enjoying that holiday as usual, but this year is different. This year we are all together in the family at home, huddled together, and I'm going to be talking exactly about being together as a family. Uh, before I start my message, reminded of a time like this when, when God instructed Moses about families and he told them they are to eat the lamb and uh, they are to smear the blood of the lamb at the doorposts of their, of their homes uh, because later in the night a very supernatural thing would happen a very unique thing would happen because the angel would come and pass over their homes. And when he sees the blood, he's going to pass over and go to the houses of the Egyptians. The same case is applying today. That blood that was smeared on the door frames uh, points us towards the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. The blood that covers us as families. And that day when God talked to Moses and told him every family, today we are huddled together as families and the same blood can be applied in our families. That night, it was going to be a very unique night because one family would be delivered and another family would be screaming because their firstborn is, is dead. And today, as we look at what is happening all over the world, the virus, the COVID-19, we know that we need God to intervene. I, I want us to open our Bibles. If you have a Bible, uh, let us open together in the book of Joshua, chapter 2. I'm going to read a scripture in Joshua, chapter 2. Maybe you can go to verse 11. We're going to read verse 11 and 12. It says... 
When we heard of it, our hearts melted, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is a God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the name of the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that when that you will spare the lives of my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all who belong to and all that belongs to them. Um, and that you will save us from death. Um, you see, the two spies that had been sent by Joshua to Jericho were hiding in the house of this uh, woman called Rahab. And we all know the trade of Rahab. The way she made her bread was a trade that is uh, quite embarrassing. She was a harlot. She was a prostitute. But God chose that woman to, to display his mercies and kindness and to show us that he's a very forgiving God and he's willing to work with whoever acknowledges him as God. And this woman had hidden these two spies on the roof of her house. And when the soldiers of Jericho were gone, she made the two spies to swear and to give a vow before God that they would save her family. You see, she knew that there is a battle that is going to happen. And she knew that the, her family was in danger. She could tell that there was warfare. And today, uh, daddies and mummies back home, there is warfare indeed. Our homes are targeted by the enemy, the devil himself. Our marriages are targeted. And therefore, our dear ones are worth the fight. Our children are worth the fight. Our grandchildren are worth the fight. Uh, when you, you read in the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 2, verse 18, the two spies said, the same cord that you have let us down, you must fasten it on the window. You must fasten this cord on the window of your house and then bring anyone that you need saved into the house. But whoever is outside your house, their blood will be upon their heads. But whoever is inside your house, surely they are going to be saved. No harm will come upon them. And therefore Rahab fastened the scarlet cord on her window frame and she made sure that it's nailed firmly because the color scarlet points to the blood of Jesus Christ. And our families inside that home, we are sure that they are safe. Rahab had to go and make sure that that scarlet cord is firmly fastened on the window because that was the token. That was the sign that the two spies said um, when that cord, the red cord is on the window, we shall know that for sure God is going to protect the, the family. Rahab asked for one thing that mattered very much to her, something that was very dear to her, to her heart, not for gold or silver or land, but she asked that my father and my mother may be saved, that my brothers and my sisters may be saved, that our children, all that belongs to them, will be saved. Your family can be saved. It doesn't matter what your background is. You see, Rahab had a reputation. She had baggage. She had low profile in, her, in the society and maybe many families had already labeled her. But God did not look at the baggage. God heard her cry in verse 12 when she said, For the Lord your God is God indeed in heaven and on earth. She declared that he is God. And because of her declaration and her plead, all oh, that my family may be saved, God heard her cry and came through for her. Even though she was morally unfit, God overlooked her baggage and had at her the, love, the lifeline, the cord that points to the blood of Jesus Christ. The scarlet cord is speaking to us today. Some people may live a life of regret and they may say, 
well, because I did this, my children are going to pay the price. Because I lead this kind of a, of a lifestyle, my family will never make it. And there are some people who feel maybe there is a, a curse in their family, a generational curse. They say, because I'm reaping what I sowed in my youth, my grandfather was a drunk, so my children will be drunk. My father is a drunk, and my children will also be drunkards. But God's mercies, uh, they are new every morning. And whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Our families can be saved irregardless of our background. God honored the cry of our heart. Even with such a messed up life uh, of a background, God still honored Rahab. Whoever is in Christ, remember what the Bible says, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, and behold, the new has come. There is nothing in your past stronger than the blood of Jesus. Uh, and so, uh, I want to bring you to a point in my message that there was some work involved. She was instructed that she has to do some work in, in chapter 2 verse 18. Bind the cord in your window. Bind the cord and make it fast, strong on the window. She was given those instructions. Uh, the spies did not say you have to bring a pastor to bind the cord or maybe the youth pastor, the teens pastor, or the children's pastor for your children. You have to bind the cord. They are the ones to bind the cord. But she said, you as the parent, you as the father, you as the mother is the one that God is counting on to bind the cord. So you must pray for your children every day. You must mention them before the Lord by their names. Sometimes I have to wake up at night at 2 a.m. and just go into the bedrooms while they are very fast asleep and just lay hands on them and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I pray for my children. My generation is blessed and I destroy any covenant of darkness in the authority of the blood of Jesus. I have to pray for them. I have to fast and pray for my family, for my children. And it is a sacrifice. You, it is something that you have to do every day. Cover them with the blood. She checked to see that the cord is there fastened every day before the destruction on the walls of Jericho. I want to give you an illustration. I want to give you a personal testimony of something that happened to me. You see, for many years, I lived in a church compound with my family, and all was well because that was right in the sanctuary. But we moved and shifted to, us to uh, an estate house, and for the first time, I was exposed to whatever happens in our community. And I tell you, brethren, it was different. Because a neighbor would wake up at night at 2 a.m., and that neighbor would start jumping up and down. We could hear the footsteps because uh, the root, the, she, she lived above us. And at night, sound travels very fast. So my wife would wake me up at 3 a.m., sometimes 1 a.m. And I could, we could hear her jumping up and throwing pebbles on the floor. And what we came to later find out that it was actually witchcraft. My son nearly died. We took our son to the hospital. He was not breathing. One of those nights, we had to dash, and I had to plead the blood of Jesus. I had to pray and intercede. Why was he dying? It's like shame was coming to the family of a pastor, and I knew that this is war. And when I found out that this could be whatever is happening, the reason why she's jump, jumping up and down, I decided to actually fight. And I made my house a battleground. I made it a stronghold of Jesus, not a stronghold of the devil. And I started pulling down stronghold and I started now pleading the blood of Jesus. And I tell you that lady had to be transferred. She had to move out. And up to now, she is not even coming back. So uh, just to go back to the scarlet cord, she had to make sure that her family was inside and plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. When our children are exposed also to the society, to the content of whatever is out there in the, our community, it is the principles and the foundations that we teach them 
that help them to make it. So you have to nail the word of God. You have to nail just like this scarlet cord, the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 and 7, it says that speak to them these words while they lie down. While they are seated, speak the commandments of the Lord. Nail them on the wall. Tie them on the wrists and on the forehead. Because God wants your children to know him. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And, uh, and uh, even when he becomes an adult, he shall never depart from the ways of the Lord. Um, my daughter is now in high school and whenever she comes for holiday, she tells me of what she has found out in school with the girls that they are, you know, she tells me, Daddy, it's not what you see whenever you come and you see the very smartly dressed students. There is a lot of things happening in our high schools. And she tells me, Daddy, it's what we learned in Sunday school. It's what we learned as we watched you and Mommy praying that has helped us to make it in high school. Because there is a lot of stuff out there. There is a lot of Hollywood things that come even in the internet. You see, you, the, the things that come into our home, in our screens, in television sets, is what we invite. But when there is principles and foundations that we have laid in, our, in the hearts of our children, they are going to sift and they are going to tell what is not right and what is from the enemy and they are going to make the right choices. Um, just to look back at Rahab as I finish this message. Because she feared God, because she pleaded for her family, God honored her. And if you look at the lineage of Jesus in the book of Matthew, you will find that Rahab became one of the great, great grandmothers of Jesus Christ. Rahab was married by a Jew. They gave birth to a man called Boaz. Boaz gave birth to a man called Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse became the father of the great king David. And our Lord Jesus Christ is called the son of David. So how much more today, when you as a father, when you as a mother, declare that your family is going to be covered. When you declare the word of God, how much more when we as we are huddled together because of the coronavirus, because of the curfew, you take time and make your family an altar place, a place of, of open heaven where these boys and girls that God has given us can see the love of God. And can, you can lay a foundation. This is the best time for you even to get to know them, get to see what they think and what they, what they, they actually uh, see what they speak. You can even watch the cartoons and get to know what the, these cartoons are all about. And so I want us to pray right now. You can close your eyes wherever you are and let us believe God together. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you for this time. We know that God, many families are watching this together with their boys and girls. May the Holy Spirit speak to them in a very special way. You are the one who used Rahab to save her family. May husbands be instruments in your hands to save their boys. May the mothers be instruments of honor in your hands to save their daughters. May our families be covered by the blood of Jesus. And today, as your servant, I pray that God, our families in East Assembly are saved. That Jesus, you are the Lord of our children. That your blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel is speaking now on behalf of our sons and daughters. That they are going to grow up and become great men and women of faith who will honor you. Today I speak a blessing on our family. I speak a blessing on the land of Kenya that God you're going to hear the cry of husbands and wives men and women of faith and you're going to remove this shaking from our nation we love you Lord we honor you we worship you in Jesus name we pray and believe Amen 
And may God bless you. And may you have a happy Easter holiday in a very unique and a special time. Amen. Wow. Wow, thank you, Percy. The red, the scarlet cord. Will you be leaving this one here? Oh, super. The blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us for the remission of our sins, for our healing. How wonderful, how gracious is that blood of the Lamb of God. And as Pastor talked about this scarlet cord, it jogged my mind to the story in the desert when there were these serpents that were biting the Israelites. And Moses was commanded by God to do a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and whoever looked there was saved a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed. And that is why we have Easter. The reason why we celebrate Easter is about Jesus Christ, his love, and coming from heaven to earth so that we may be, you know, rejoined back even to Jehovah God who loves us, our Father. It is time to give. It is time to give. Can I see a smile on you? Yes. Yes. There's no better time than to show our love for Christ than offering and giving time. I want to remind us about a scripture that we quote when we are leading people to Christ. But for me, I want us this morning to look at it differently. John 3.16. Can we all recite it together in your homes and right here where we are recording? Let's go together. For God so loved the world that he gave his son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God gave his best, his only son to die for us. So how much more? And so it's a beautiful time for us to give and I want us to look in our screens as we flash our M-Pesa pay bill numbers 904-801 as we give our tithes our offering, our food bank, CDC, to the missions. Thank you very much. Yes, there we go. Tithes and offerings, food bank. We also give to the needy in our society. You can also show whether it's a mission or any kind of offering or the CDC. And our pay bill number is 904-801. Specify the account. Whatever is flashing right there is food bank. There can be your tithe, your offering. And I want to invite our praise and worship team to give us a number as we give our tithes and offering. And before they do that, I want to go through a couple of announcements so that we follow instructions. Pastor Masha has talked about instructions. The Bible is an instruction manual on how we live life. And so I want to remind us what the government is telling us because we are obedient. We are children of God. We hear. And so the first instruction is wash your hands with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds. If there's no water that is running near you, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol content. Number two, hygienic coughing. You either cough into your sleeve or cough or sneeze into a tissue which you dispose in a very safe way. And when you're not feeling too well, we are urged to stay at home or seek medical attention. So when you see me praise, I'll praise like a winner man. When you see me praise, I'll praise like a winner man. When you see me praise, I'll praise like a winner man. When you see me praise, I'll praise like a winner man. Oh, 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 when you see me dance. I'll dance like a winner man When you see me dance I'll dance like a winner man When you see me dance I'll dance like a winner man When you see me dance I'll 
When I see you dance, you dance like a window man. When you see me dance, I dance like a window man. Oh, 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 window man. like one I am also a winner man we are coming to the end of our online service it has been beautiful just hanging out with you stay encouraged God is in control nothing will go out of hand and as I invite our Pasi Masha let's just call him the way we call him right um, to give us a benediction as we close I want to leave you with these words they make me strong um, there was a time King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 knew his fried. There were all these armies that were coming to finish the Israelites. And he didn't know what to do. Every day they were building up and he had these generals of his who were not even giving him some space to breathe. Every few minutes they would come and say, guess what, king? Some other group has come in and their arrows, when they shoot, they shoot fire. Have you seen the other army? That one, their shields, you can't go through them. And I think those nyahunyos they have, man, they hit hard. And the guy was scared. And he didn't know what to do. But I love what happened. When he was so scared, his knees were rattling, shaking, and even his crown was getting off. Eh? He just went back and said, oh God, now I need to come back to you. And I want to read this as Pasi Masha comes up to close for us with a word. 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 12. Hear these words. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Praise the Lord. Our eyes as Kenya as all the countries of the world, may we set our eyes on Jehovah God, the God of Israel. Karibu mchungaji. Amen. Thank you so much. And may God bless you, families back home. Thank you so much for joining us in this online service. And just before we finish, I want to say to you that God has beautiful thoughts in regard to you. God has a beautiful plan for our nation. Even in this time when the whole world is being shaken, he has a beautiful plan for those who love him, for those who have nailed the blood of Jesus in their families. God had a beautiful plan. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Akika, Akika, we manazo favili, sita ni fuata mimi, ni taka nyumbani mwabwana, siku zote zama. Oh, Hakika, Hakika, we manas of a vili, Zita Hello everybody, happy Easter from Teen Stars. This is Lula Lira, one of the facilitators at uh, KZ East Assemblies. Uh, as much as we are in quarantine and we're keeping social distance, we are washing our hands on a regular basis, I take time to wish you a happy Easter. Of course, Christ is the reason for the season. Happy Easter, guys. We missed you so much and want to wish you a feast. Happy Easter, guys. Follow us on Facebook. Happy 
is that guys, um, Christ is the reason for the season. He endured the cross and he has seen our pain even in this coronavirus, the pandemic is over. Happy Easter guys. God is still in control. Uh, just want to wish you a happy Easter. Happy holidays. Uh, stay safe. Stay at home. Wear a mask if you have to. Uh, and enjoy yourselves. Okay? Cheers. We love you. Hi, Easter Assembly. Hi, Royal Daughters. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for you, each one of you, this uh, hour. Just remembering that we have missed the fellowship of one another. But I know the Lord is going to give us another opportunity where we will meet again and fellowship. Such a time like this, when everyone has been retained in their homes, I want to wish you Happy Easter. I want to thank God for each one of you and pray that the Lord will keep you. This is the time we're remembering that Jesus Christ exchanged our sins for righteousness. He took our curses for a blessing. And this resurrection actually is a great victory for us. And I want to pray that whatever that has died and that whatever that was dead in your life, that the Lord will give you a new beginning, He will give you a new resurrection. I want to thank God that everything that we put our hands on and all that concerns us, the Lord will actually protect and He will revive. I want to ask and plead for each one of us that we keep in prayer. Let's pray for each other. Let us remember that at such a time like this, the rushes shall actually flourish on faith and therefore there is hope, there is faith that keeps us each and every day. I know that the Lord is on our side and nothing shall go wrong. I want to bless the Lord for each one of you. I want to thank God that He has kept each one of us and whatever some families have gone through, you are in our prayers and you know that the Lord will be with you all the time. Thank you ladies, thank you Easter Assembly. God bless you, Lord daughters, and the Lord bless you. I miss your hearts, we missed you. Amen. I said, just one up. Yeah, not one up. In the car, I remember for three weeks, that's the Kufa, so it's possible. Ah, now, when you say, I'm in distance, place public, means you may avoid gathering now. Social distancing. Yeah, social distance. Social distance. Good morning, what? The camera is not Make sure. Upona, mask. Wear a mask. Protect yourself. You wash your hands with running water and soap. Yeah, this is what is that? Make sure. Make sure you sanitize. 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 Ninawatakia Easter hasa kanjema wakati huu wa msimu huu. Naomba ya kwamba amani ya Mungu iwe pamoja nanyi kwa shirika wote Mungu awabariki na mweze kufuata maagizo ambayo inatakana tufuate ya kuweza kutimiza hii tuwekane na hii mambo ya coronavirus. Praise God East Assembly's Church. This is Owen Mwatia and I'm here to just to tell you happy happy Easter. And as we celebrate Easter, let's know it's a time for us to go back to God. For me, following the government regulation and uh, whatever is happening right now, I decided to take that moment just to know God more, to have an intimate time and moment with God. Just to make sure that I'm deep in the Word, listening to the Word most of the time. Instead of complaining, I'm just staying at home feeling like too much is happening. I, I locked myself in and I decided just to listen to the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to listen to the Word of God, to pray and just have that intimate time with God. For me, it has really been very, very beneficial and I really thank God because right now I feel like everything is revealing itself because sometimes we always feel like we are too busy running around, doing our errands here and there and we forget that all this is because of God. There's nothing as important as having peace around you. And it's a true reflection that we need to go back and go back to the first love. Just to know God more. Just to praise God more. Just to have that intimate time with God. Just to have that moment each and every day. Each and every day. For me, my wife says she's like, it's like she's reliving the day. Every day. But for me, I feel like every day is a new day. Because today if I read 
Psalm 91, tomorrow I'll read Psalm, you understand? There are so many verses in the Bible. And I learn more, I learn about fasting, I learn about prayer, I learn about the Holy Spirit. So I'm learning and I'm learning and I appreciate this time. And uh, for everyone in the world, there are so many people who I know they are being affected emotionally, spiritually, even in our church. So many people have been affected emotionally, spiritually, and, uh, and psychologically. But I want to tell each and every person that this is the right moment to go back and give thanks, repent, know God, and just tell God, we're coming to you, repenting on our sins, we're coming to you, crying out to you because we know in you we can trust. I trust in God because in all things we, sh we, we, we can only but give him the glory because he's the Messiah, he's our king, he's our father. Whatever is happening, he knows what's happening right now. But I believe there's a breakthrough coming. And it's only for us to pray, go down to our knees and pray, pray really hard and have intimate time with God and God will deliver the nation. So wherever you are, this time, if you call it a curfew or a quarantine or whatever time you're using, just know, convert that time to a moment with God. For me, it's not a quarantine, for me it's a moment with God, to have intimate time with God. The Bible says, a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand by your right hand, but it will not come near you. So trust in the Lord, trust in God. Do not be frightened, do not be dismayed. He's still king, he's still on the throne. During Easter, pray more. Pray more and spend time more knowing the Lord. May God bless you. Thank you.